What's going on everyone? My name's Slick. Welcome to this week's Elyon patch overview. We'll be covering the in-game changes and fixes, as well as the Ruby Shop additions. Before we continue, I post videos every other day about all types of games. If that interests you, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell, and also watch some of my previous videos. Thanks. As mentioned in the last week's patch notes, we were supposed to receive a content update this week. It was going to be a 10-man raid. Unfortunately, this is going to be pushed back due to difficulty. However, they're going to go back to the drawing board and they're going to make adjustments so we can enjoy it as soon as possible. Though we're not receiving the content this week, the rest of the patch notes list is rather large and we're going to go over all of that. Looks like all the world quests, dimensional portals and everything was moved an hour forward to match daylight savings times. There was an adjustment to the prohibited words and the party dungeon schedule has been updated. The beast layer is going to be Monday to Tuesday. The twisted temple is going to be Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday and the wailing citadel is going to be Friday and Saturday. The Fighter's Medal that's awarded in Realm Wars is no longer considered a junk item. I wonder what that's going to entail in the future. Everyone's favorite AFK activity has received a new drop. This box is going to be called the Lucky Luminous Gold Box. It's untradeable, and it says that it requires an item level of 500, but below that it describes that when you're below this item level, the drop rate will decrease. So I wonder if that means that the drop is completely unobtainable, or if it just means that the drop rate is higher. They've added a new feature called the Bash Dismantle. This will allow you to select all of your uncommon or below, rare, or epic items. It will allow you to select up to 20 of these and dismantle them immediately. In the Clan War UI, you can now preview the map, and also the map has been changed to the Waving Citadel. There are five bases around the Circular Citadel. The Ruthless Crown of Death is created from two of the five bases within the Circular Citadel. This will allow you for one minute to see hidden targets within 40 meters of range and you will have a PvP damage increase by 20%, however you will also take 30% more damage. Mana Awakening presets have arrived. Now to use these you're going to need to purchase a preset expansion ticket from the Ruby Shop. I'm unsure if this is going to be added to the Loyalty Shop as well, however I really do hope it is. Now keep in mind Transcendency Stones are taken when you apply them to the Mana Awakening nodes. Meaning, if you want separate mana trees, you're going to have to go get another one of those Transcendent Awakening Stones and apply it to that Mana Awakening preset. Mana Awakening trees and imprints in all presets will be reset at the end of the season. However, there's still no end date determined for this. More shortcut options have been added to the settings menu. This is going to allow for more customization for those of you who like to hotkey everything. Let's talk about the issues that were fixed. Fix an issue where you couldn't change chat settings when you're playing the game in German. Fix an issue where the sound of the first skill attribute of Gunner's Explosive Leap was not audible. Fix an issue where the Dark Warrior Rune attribute couldn't be applied upon Resurrection. Fix an issue where the laughter social gesture was not visible when playing the game in French. Fix an issue where the client crashed when the percent sign appeared in a speech bubble. Fix an issue where the Rune Scroll UI would open up when switching screens using character appearance change from the main menu. Fix an issue where certain texts from the house UI were not showing properly when playing the game in French or Spanish. Fix an issue where the spell orb text that appears at the start of the clan war was not showing up properly. Now onward to our beautiful ruby shop where we can spend loads of rubies to look so so pretty. Unfortunately it looks like we're not getting any outfits to look pretty this week. But they did add the mana awakening preset expansion ticket, you can get that for 200 rubies. They've also added the unknown hunter's blessing package 1 and 2. Package number one is going to cost you 3,000 rubies, and package number two is going to cost you 4,500 rubies. These packages are going to be available until November 24th before maintenance. The purchase limit of each of these packages is three per account. That does it for this week's patch notes. I look forward to providing you more Elyon information as well as new games like Battlefield 2042 and Halo Infinite. I've been playing those games recently and they have been pretty fun. So if you want to see news about those games as well as gameplay from FPSs, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell, and also like this video if it helped you out in any way. As always, I want to thank you for your time and support, and I wish you the best time grinding on Elyon. Peace.